All right, everybody. Let's get started on this knock sensor problem. So I've already removed the engine covers. That's pretty easy. Anyone can figure that out. Um, next step, I'm going to move this little intake duct. There's two 10 millimeters down here off camera. So I'll get those out. Once those are out, this comes loose. And then up here, you have little, like a rubber retainer that holds this intake pipe thing to the air boxes. So I'll pull that off, and then this thing will come out. Once that's out, you have to start working on the air boxes here. So maybe we can take this out as one. We'll see. I just had this out not too long ago for the fuel pumps gaskets. So I'll take this main hose clamp off at the throttle body. And then these two clamps or PCV or whatever it is. Emissions. This one's broken. Actually, they're both broken. The clip doesn't work, and this is like falling out. Whatever. Pop the clips for the air filters. I'm going to try to get this thing off as one unit. Or not. That was kind of loose. Uh, this thing, I think, swings up and then out. And that comes out. There's probably a bolt, yeah, there's bolts in here you'll have to take out to get these out of here. So let me just finish this. So, this thing, there's a little wire that's attached to it. Don't worry about that in a second. Get this off and then this filter out. Then we'll get those two air boxes out. Okay, air boxes, 10 millimeter nuts on here. And they're spinning endlessly. That just pulls straight out, very easy. Feels like we're halfway there already. This one, just pull it straight up. There's like a, a plug here, rubber piece that kind of fits in. A little stud on the uh, valve cover over here that it pops into. So next what I want to do is expose this intake manifold. So I'm going to take out all these nuts that's holding this wiring harness to this and these injector drivers and ECUs up here. I'm going to take it all off uh, so I can get access to the bolts to the intake manifold. So, once you get the four nuts off of this harness, the fun doesn't end there. Then you have to unplug everything that this is part of. Because we need to move this this way. So all the plugs, everything going that way. All the uh, coil packs, sensors, solenoids, everything because we need to be able to free this and pull it that way. So I'm going to go unplug all the plugs I see and then get this out of here. Okay, still plugging away here. It's more loose. I've uh, got all this on the left passenger side here off. Um, I'm hoping this can just kind of slide that way. A lot of these connectors just broke like the plug the tab that you push it's just so brittle so this is going to be another nightmare some wires pulled out of the the plugs it's just this is just bad um, this harness goes both ways down and it also goes this way up and down towards the trans so I'm hoping this is just alternator on this side. Looks like it. So I'm going to unplug that and then hopefully um, the, this is a power feed also to this box, fuse box. So everything on the left side here is good. 
take that out and I should be able to swing it this way. That's the plan at least. All right, while I figure out what to do with this harness that disappears down by the alternator, uh, there's enough room here that I can start to remove probably the injector drivers here, the whatever they're called. Yeah, tread injector drivers. At least get this out of here and give me a second just to think about what I'm going to do, how I'm going to get down here. Because I can't jack the car up anymore because I uh, can't move it. It's just kind of stuck where it's at. Um, I think I can reach the alternator from up top, but there's two other cables that go down there. So I'm going to have to deal with that to get this fully free because I can't pull it any more than this. That's not really enough to get the manifold off. So a couple 10 millimeter bolts nuts. Let me get this off next. All right. So you got to celebrate the little wins. So I think you get this out of here now. That broke. Nope, it's not connected to every harness. There it is. Alright, so that's out. Gives us a little bit more mental space, if you will. And a little bit closer to the goal. So put these out of the way. PCE hoses that okay all right it's looking good need to get this off of here so we don't break this and then the last step is just getting this free from the alternator and whatever else is down there so i'm gonna work on that and hopefully come up with a solution and then I'll be back. So this hose was so brittle, it just broke. And the fitting didn't break, luckily. Just this hose just snapped. So we're going to have to replace this one. Add that to our parts list. But again, it's like, this is rock solid. It's not even rubber anymore. So this one now, luckily, we can... Hopefully get off of this yellow thing, whatever that is. Maybe not. I don't even know how this thing comes off of here. Well, we'll leave that for now. And carry on. Alright, so there's coolant lines over here on the left. There's no way to get around it. You're going to have to disconnect them. So I put a couple clamps on to mitigate any coolant loss. And I'm going to... Just take off probably these two lines and then try to swing the lines that way so I can get to these bolts on the left side. All right, quick update. We got the metal piping out for the coolant. We lost very little coolant. So now this side of bolts and nuts is exposed. So I'm gonna loosen the rest of those, get the ones in the back corner and just see if there's any way I can sneak this out Kind of this left side without messing with this harness way down there but we'll see so these are all 12 millimeter um, there's a combination of, of bolts with like a, a hex or a torx top so 12 millimeter and those nuts that also secure the plastic intake manifold to the the heads or the you know secondary manifold or whatever is down there so Get those both out and uh, see where we're at okay so the good news is we're loose the manifold is ready to come off uh, i just gotta try to sneak it out of here so let me try doing that off camera i might be able to get it out this way i don't know we'll see but uh, let me figure it out and then uh, i'll come back make sure these little hoses you you remember to pull these off this one is also rock solid. It's PCV related. I'll probably place that as well. 
coolant line here on the, uh, there's actually two coolant lines on the throttle body. Just remember to pull those off. And then uh, hopefully we'll see. Maybe we can come up and then this way and out. But let me do some magic and uh, I'll see what happens here. Okay, slowly but surely we've got some progress here. Just making sure not to uh, obviously break anything else, pinch anything, etc. But we're uh, sneaking it out of here. Look at that. Only thing I'm worried about is the gaskets, getting those down and not having them fall or anything. But I think those pop into the uh, intake manifold. So they're kind of secured in there. So it looks, it looks like we're, uh, we got it. Look at this. We got it out, man. That's exciting. That is exciting. Wow, didn't even have to touch the uh, alternator harness. We did scuff up the um, <clears throat> heat shield, not the heat shield, the foam in back, but whatever. All right, let's get that out of the way. Get this foam out of the way, this heat soundproofing heat foam. This is obviously still in our face, but what are you going to do? Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Let me relocate this camera. Okay, this is a good shot here. Just move the light a little bit. There we go. So, you can see, we actually have some type of a mouse nest here which is not uncommon uh, which could be to eat and wiring uh, etc so let's get this out of here uh, oh <laughs> oh this is quite interesting um, so this knock sensor wire is completely gone it's just totally chewed straight through. So that would be our problem. Right there, there's just, it's gone. Uh, however, <clears throat> I do see some evidence here. This pink crust coolant is typically from the leaking valley plate. Um, yeah. So, Looks like we're going to be sealing the valley plate again. If it, I, I checked the history on this thing, like dealer service, and I don't remember. I'll have to look again to see if it was actually ever done. But from what I remember, it didn't say anything about being done. So that is going to complicate things a little bit. I don't know. I, it doesn't look like you have to remove the um, direct injectors on this one the plates pretty much in the middle so I'm not seeing how it would affect that the big thing is with the direct injectors a lot of these crack and break when you try to take this all out so let me move I'm gonna move remove this fuel line here and then this PCV box to get a little bit better look inside of here to see what we got going on but for sure this is our problem this is the number three knock sensor and I'm actually surprised it didn't trigger sooner because it's not even connected so that's not bad I don't know if I'm even going to replace the knock sensors because it's obviously not a knock sensor problem it's just the wiring um, but yeah, let me take some of the stuff off this fuel line, um, whatever you want to call it, connector or junction or bridge from one rail to the other. Uh, this sensor probably I'll unscrew and get out of here, and then I'll pull this black PCB housing out of here. Alright, so here you can see a little bit more of the extent of the damage and the issues.
Here's the harness in question. I think I can buy this whole thing. That'd make it a lot easier than messing around with all these brittle wires. So I'll see if we can find a part number on this. Um, we can just order it. If it's 100, 150 bucks, I mean, that would totally make sense. So yeah, good, good, good. Final look at the damage here before I clean it all up. And then uh, we'll move on to this valley plate thing. Which may or may not be a nightmare. Maybe we'll see. Alright, part two, fixing and reassembly coming up next. So after some thinking, uh, I'm not gonna do the valley plate. My reason is it looks like this is just old coolant that no one ever cleaned up. Two, the car never overheated, never lost coolant. But if you look in the back by the, the trans down there, there's no coolant leaking down. And then three, uh, it looks like it was already done. If you look on the valley plate, the side of it here, I can manage this light here. It's already got the new black uh silicone so typically if it hasn't been done it's going to have the white or the gray stuff that's super hard to oh, there we go it's super hard to get off but this has the new silicone so based on those three factors uh i'm not touching it it was already done so now the problem is um, I've got to wait about a week to get a quote from Japan and then it'll be another you know one to two weeks for shipping so I'm looking at three weeks to get um, the harness and the hoses the PCB hoses a bunch of other stuff to put this back together um, or the trade-off is you pay more so you go to a local Lexus dealer you can get it probably tomorrow or the day after But then you're paying triple or quadruple the price. So in my opinion, I don't need the car done immediately So I'm gonna wait for my contact to reach back out um, And then I'll, I'll share that pricing and then again, I'll, I'll let you know you can email me or send me a message on where I get these parts because it looks like the harness alone is 330 from Lexus with no discount. But um, it's looking to be probably 100 bucks or less from Japan directly. So I'll post all that when I get it. Um, but yeah, I think I'll do a part two video just putting it all that together. And then I'll get this up so you guys can watch it and uh, list all the part numbers and everything. The knock sensors, just out of curiosity... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to test uh, the homage on them, and they should all read similar. I think it's like 0.19 or 0.20 ohms or mega ohms or something like that uh, in between the two pins. The service manual shows exactly what the value is, but just to make sure those are good. 
Okay, just like I was saying, 0 0.20 mega ohms. Looks like the the reading between the two pins of the knock sensor. So I was I admit in the past I was um I was one that I would just replace all four. Like if you're in here, just replace them. But they're factory knock sensors, they're testing fine. Even though we had a problem with the knock sensor, we determined that it was the wiring harness, not the knock sensor itself. So we're going to go through, test each of them, make sure they're all the same, and there's no reason to replace them. So that's kind of my theory on that. Again, back in the day when I just did like a shotgun approach, I would fix the harness, but then I'd just replace the four because I don't want to open this up again. But um, even with this, it is risky, but typically you'll see like the actual coolant in here and um, it'll be much um, much more than what you're seeing here so yeah the only thing I mean the only reason why I'm doing this is because there is this black sealant in here and it's kind of like I know if it wasn't replaced it wouldn't have this maybe it'll come back and bite me maybe not but I'm thinking I'm just gonna clean all this off with a little toothbrush and some uh, simple green, wash it away, and then that'll be that. Um, one last thing, I'll probably stick a boroscope behind here, down by the trans, just to make sure 100% there is no coolant trickling down there. Um, but again, it looks pretty old and crusty, like they just didn't do a good job cleaning it. So that's it. I'll, part two will be in probably a few weeks whenever I get these parts in and we'll go from there. But unfortunately it's not going to be done anytime soon. So thanks for watching. See ya.